So this is part two of our class, and we're going to start with sheet number four, instructions sheet number four. If you would like one, two, and three, you can go back to the network folder and look at part one. But we're starting on part four, or sheet four, which is actually version two. So you want to double click that, and I'll turn the printer on a little bit later so you can get a copy of them. But on sheet number four is our first set of tasks. Sheet number four talks about archiving WordPress with the duplicator plugin. So this will allow us to resurrect the site that we worked on last month in part one. Um, ideally, you are saving a copy of your work onto your own flash drive, but if not, I'll give you a copy of my work. And so we did this first part. We've been doing this first part together all last month. We've been archiving the site which is we've been saving a site, we've been saving a perfect copy of our site, because as we saw previously, we can't simply drag a copy of the folder to our flash drive and go home. We have to make a duplicator archive. This archive makes a copy of all of the text and all of the pictures and the database and everything. So there's this process that we went through last month and we will continue to go through this month to back up our site and so what we'll be doing very soon is we'll bring it back to life. We're going to resurrect it so that we don't start over. So that we begin where we ended last week. We have a site that's already installed, uh, has a little bit of content, has a theme, has, uh, has us ready to go to start with the, with the plugin, the, uh, the e-commerce plugin. So we'll do this together in just a moment. This is the same as we've seen previously, but what's new is this section here. This is why this is a version 2 of the sheet. This is set the rewrite module. This is one of the things we talked about last time. Remember when we changed our permalink structure to give us better uh, addresses. Instead of an address that said WordPress slash 123, it would say WordPress slash about. Instead of WordPress 5768, it would say WordPress slash products page or something. In order for that to work, in order for permalinks to work properly, pretty permalinks, we need to activate the rewrite module, which we did, but now I've written it down here, and it's part of one of our sheets, so we need to do that also. This is pretty much a recap of what we've done before, which we'll do in a moment. That's number four. How many of you since last week, if you're continuing. How many of you have done any of this at home, on your own computer? Anything that you learned? Okay, so you should apply it. You, you learn it here and I make it seem so easy, but then when you go home and you run into trouble and I'm not there to help you. So make sure you try these things at home, make notes if you run into trouble, and then of course ask in class. Because if you don't do it, you if you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't use your knowledge, you lose your knowledge. So, uh, any questions on number four here? Yes. So you indicated that you can copy the one that you created, mm -hmm. and I can start from there. That's right. We'll do that together in just a moment. I'll provide that file to all of us, and then we'll get started with this instead of starting over. Yes. That's always a good question about should you start with your own work or with mine? It really is up to you, although I recommend you use my work because on mine we can make mistakes, we can break it, we can try again. And if it's your own work, maybe you don't want to damage your own, your own work, your own site. Mm -hmm. But you're perfectly welcome to use your own work, your own site, or use mine. Usually I'm going to be talking about it in terms of my files, so that might be easier to work with. Let's take a, a brief overview of sheet number five, which of course we'll go into details later. But let's look at sheet number five, e-commerce plugin.
I've got a brief one-page introduction to the e-commerce plugin that we're going to use in this class. There's many e-commerce solutions out there, many ways to sell products online, many ways to sell products through WordPress, but we're going to use this particular plugin. I've had experience with it uh, in part of my company doing websites for clients. I'll mention other plugins as well that I've had experience with that I would recommend. And because there's so many ways to accomplish something, we can have a paralysis in that we don't know what, what to do because we have too many options. So I'm going to say that we're going to use this particular plugin. It'll work really well for most of us right out of the box. For some of us, no, it might not, it might not accomplish everything that I want to do in selling products. So I'll mention other possibilities. But just looking at this briefly, it shows that we're going to use a plugin called WP eCommerce. It's been around for several years. I've seen it evolve throughout the years, keep improving, keeps getting better. It's free. The features that we need to get started with come included because some plugins have a lot of great features, but they don't come with the with the basic theme. They come after you pay a little bit extra. You buy the premium features. You find that a lot. You get a, you get a preview of a plugin, for example, but all the best features then you have to pay. And it really ranges. Some might be $10 extra, some might be $100 extra. There's a big range. But I feel to teach this concept to students, WP eCommerce plugin out of the box works one of the best ways. So that's the one we're going to focus on. Yes, there's also WooCommerce, and then there's also, what else? Um, anyone know other, other ways? Uh, there's WooCommerce, Magento, um, Zencart. There's lots of ways to do this, but I'm going to talk about WP Commerce as a viable solution. So we're going to go through the process of installing the plugin and seeing what it gave us and that we quickly have the ability to add products, inventory, shipping, selling products, um, collecting payment, virtual products, all of that. So I'll turn on the printer on a little bit later, and I'll let you uh, print these if you'd like. But you've got nice big monitors. You could conceivably put one document on the edge over here. Do you know this trick with windows? If you drag your window, if you drag it to the right, all the way to the right, it'll eventually snap into place. Then you can have one window of your instructions on the side and one window over here of something else. So you see if you just drag, if you drag your window to an edge, it will snap into place. So you can have two windows at once. You have nice big monitors, so that might be useful. Since you can't quite print yet, you might want to have your, your work side by side like that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to close sheet number five for the moment. We'll get back to it very soon. But what I want to do is accomplish the tasks of sheet number four. I want to resurrect the site. I want to bring back the work from last month. So if you open sheet number four, you will see on a section called Resurrect Your Site. So we're going to need to do this stuff here to bring our site back to life. If you are brand new, we're using a software called WAMP server, which creates a virtual website, a virtual server on our computers. Our site will not be live. It will not be up on the real internet. It'll only be accessible on these computers. Because if you wanted a real site on the real internet, you'd have to pay. You'd have to pay a variety of companies, a variety of prices to get your little piece of the internet. And there are free solutions out there, but I don't bother with them because usually they are too good to be true. You're going to put a bunch of advertisements on your site. They're going to be very slow. So 
I don't really mention the free solutions. Later on, we'll talk about viable online hosting solutions. But in this class, we use software called WAMP Server. It's already installed on our computers. And in order for us to accomplish any of these tasks, we need to activate it first. So actually, if you go to your desktop, we should do this step first. If you go to your desktop, you will see the WAMP server icon, this little purple W. Go ahead and double click it. Double click that WAMP server icon. You won't get any feedback. You won't get a pop-up that says, welcome to WAMP server. Nothing seems to happen. What does happen is you'll see a little W in the corner. A little W that goes from red to orange to green. Did everyone get a little green W in the corner? So that means our WAMP server is online. We've got, or our, our WAMP server is running. If it says offline, don't worry. But WAMP server is green. It's a, it's a virtual server that will let us then install WordPress and run it like if it was a real website up on the real internet. Okay, so as long as we've got that WAMP server green icon, then we can get to the instructions. Step one, log in to phpMyAdmin to create a database. Okay, so if you were here last month, you know what that means, but if you're new this month, it means this. Go ahead and open up your web browser. Anyone, anyone that you like, doesn't matter. I'm going to open Firefox. So launch the Firefox web browser, and we will go to the web address localhost slash php my admin so if it worked it'll take you to php my admin screen that means your web server is running that means it's ready to accomplish the task that I have there of creating a database. Did everyone get this PHP my admin screen? Okay, so we've got a button here to create a database. Go ahead and click databases. And then it asks database name. We'll call our database simply WordPress. And once you've typed WordPress, you want to click Create to create the database. So now this says I've got a new database, WordPress. So that was our step one here. Step one and two, actually. We logged into phpMyAdmin. We created a database. We did this several times last month. This should not be new. Step three, move the folder from step 11c to the WAMP folder. Well, this is just saying that we need a copy of the work we worked on last month. We need to copy that or move it to our www folder. So that means we're going to go back to the desktop. We're going to go back to the network folder. So open up your computer window. You're going to go back to the classroom data network location. Scroll down back to our e-commerce part 2 folder, Campus Ecom 2. You're going to see something that, that wasn't there a little while ago. That's a copy of the work that we ended up with on the last day of last month. 
So I'm going to leave this window open. This is a copy of last month's work. I'm going to leave this window open and open another computer window. You can go back up and open another computer window. This is the class e-commerce 2, so we're going to open the e-commerce 2 folder. So in this new window, we will go to the local disk folder. Local disk C, C as in cat. And then when you scroll down, you will see a WAMP folder. So this is where the WAMP software is installed. Double click the WAMP server, the WAMP folder. And then double click to open the www folder. So now, from the network folder with last month's project, you're going to drag that folder, the whole folder, into the www folder. It's in the C drive. So here I've copied from the network folder to my www folder in the WAMP folder. Question? No, no, but there's a problem with my... Okay, everyone, there's a little problem here. Sorry about this. For some reason, in the network folder, in the Campus 2 folder, that's last week's work, but it's empty. So there's a problem in there. Let me see if I can fix that before we proceed. It doesn't have anything in that folder. Should we delete the folder before I drag it to www? Yes. From your www folder, delete it because it's not correct. Question. It would actually, so if I can get a copy of that. Yeah, for some reason last week's work was not saved, so they had to get a copy of that. So, do you want us to still delete it? Yes, because it doesn't work.
All right, everyone. So uh, sorry about that. So um, we should now, from the network folder, have the correct files. So you want to do the same thing again. Uh, in the www folder, you can delete the old folder with last week's name. That was an incomplete file. So actually now, if you go back to the network folder and drag 928, drag it over and now that should be correct. That folder was was empty, was incomplete for some reason. So now we're gonna actually put the correct the correct folder. So let's take a moment to do that. Call me over if you need any help. Um, I'm not sure why it's just not one like... moment I saw I can write and refresh my screen um, and it's still not showing your nine twenty one. So that's still empty. You're going to become one. Oops. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me fix it. One more thing. Too many folders here. So this is the way to share the files. Okay, here it here it goes. On ecom two, it's only supposed to have my three PDFs and nine twenty eight. Uh, nine twenty one was for the previous class. So hopefully now then you should see only nine twenty eight in my com two folder. Drag that over to your www folder, and then let's uh, proceed from there. Yes, All right, everyone. So at this point, we've uh, copied or moved, like I've got here, move or copy the folder from.
previous steps into your WW folder. Great, so now we've got a copy of our work from last time. We can do number four. In your web browser, access the installer file. And notice here I was saying last month. Don't get hung up. Don't get hung up if, if the instructions say something exactly and yours is not exact. Here I'm saying, let's go to this address. HTTP localhost my site installer. This will not work, obviously, if you go to your folder because there is no folder called my site. What is our folder currently called of this project? WordPress? No. Oh, well. It's currently called 2015-09-28. So this is what I'm saying about if, if you ever see my instructions or other tutorials that tell you do this and yours is not exactly the same, you need to use critical thinking to figure out, well, what's the disconnect? My instructions are saying go to your site called my site, but there's no such thing as that because there's a folder called 2015-09-28. All last month, however, what have we been calling our folder project? I think I heard someone say WordPress. That is correct. We've been using the folder called WordPress. So let's rename our folder instead of it having a date. Just rename your folder there. Rename the folder in your www folder. Call it WordPress. That doesn't matter what it's called, really. It's just that when you access it, when you type its address and such, are you going to remember that it was 2015-09-28? Or are you going to remember that it's called WordPress? So I'm changing it to just simply be called WordPress. And now my instructions, if I go back to the web browser, it's saying let's go to http colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress slash installer dot php so again that's a little different from my instructions but you shouldn't always think about doing things in a clear in a completely rote manner you need to also think one step ahead a little bit outside the box how does it apply to you because this particular address will not work at all once you have your own website. If I have victorsbakery.com, logically I'm going to have victorsbakery.com slash wordpress slash installer dot php. Localhost only makes sense because we've got WAMP server in this room. When you've got your real internet site, you're going to need to put your real internet address instead of localhost. If this is correct, then you type it and press enter, and you will see the duplicator installer screen. If you don't see it, call me over, because somewhere along the road you missed a folder name or something. Anyone need a little help?
All right, so uh, this is the duplicator installer. This is what will bring your site back to life. Um, so we do have to do this little bit of setup here, but then once we're done with this screen, we'll have a perfectly fully functional WordPress, which is what we ended up with last time, last month. Uh, so let's see my instructions. What else? Um, name is the name of the database you created in number two. User is root. Password is empty. There's no password. So, okay, localhost, I didn't say anything about it, so we leave it alone. I didn't say anything about action, so we leave it alone. Name is the name of the database we created, which was WordPress. We created a database called WordPress a little while ago in the PHP My Admin screen. The user to access the database is root. This is also just built into PHP My Admin. How would you know? Well, you would listen to your instructor, number one. And number two, you would read the manual. The manual of phpMyAdmin says that to access the databases, the, the user is root. And that also the, ba the default password is empty, no password, which is obviously the worst username and the worst password there is. But in a local host, on a virtual server, WAMP server, that is not on the real internet, it doesn't matter. When this goes off out to a real server on the real internet, you do want a real username and a real password. That's out of our scope of this class how to do that. But I'm just telling you right here, this is what's built into PHP My Admin on localhost. To see if this worked, click test connection. Question. Um, is it is, is the username uh, uh, or I'm sorry, name uh, work case sensitive? It is actually. So if we type capital R for root, that's different than lowercase. Okay. So good point there. It is case sensitive. And you'll and you'll see that if you type capital root test connection, you'll get failed. So everyone go ahead and type test, uh, click test connection because everyone sees success. Questions? So um, if we hadn't set up WordPress as a database and click mm -hmm. and click create new database in PHP, would that status that for us? Let me check. I'm about to create a brand new word, a brand new database called WordPress. And I'm going to click Create a New Database. Test connection. Fail. It's kind of a misnomer, unfortunately. This makes you think, okay, I'm going to create a database at this point, but not really. So I wouldn't rely on that as if it's going to create a new database. I would still create one under PHP my admin. Um, what does work, which is very powerful and also dangerous, is the second option here, connect and remove all data. If there already exists a database called WordPress with a fully functional site, and if I select this one, it'll warn me of course, but then it'll delete completely my old site and reinstall this one. 
if I leave it on create a new one and there already exists a database, it won't let me do it. That's at least some protection there. It won't let me put in a new database on top of an old one, even though it says create a new one. But if I click that one, all bets are off, and it will let me put in a brand new database on top of an old one. And that could be very dangerous. You could lose your whole site. So this seems to be okay. Connection works fine. Uh, you need to activate this. I have read the warnings. All the warnings here that are telling you this is proof, this is technical. You might need guidance from a professional. Test your results. Test everything. Because the limits of liability of this plugin are that it'll make a perfect copy of your site and then transfer it to wherever you want. But they're not liable for you to accidentally erase your whole company site <laughs> by making by putting a copy of it from one server to another. So right here, you're basically indemnifying them. You're saying, okay, I'm not going to hold you responsible for messing up my site, and you cannot proceed until you check it. So yes, you read the warnings, click Run, and it'll say one more time, are you sure? You know what you're doing, right? If you don't know, cancel. But since I'm helping you, you do know what you're doing, you want to click OK. It'll take a moment to process what it's going to do, the, this installer.php file is extracting the contents of the site, unzipping the whole thing, putting every file where it goes, and also very importantly, connecting your site to the database. Because a modern software like WordPress runs on top of a database, and so this is basically putting everything into a database. It's going to resurrect my site called Victor's Bakery from last month. If you'd like your own name there, you can change it if you want. I'm going to leave it. And if you want a brand new administrator account, you can also create one there. We already have one from last month, but you can create a brand new one if you'd like. I'm not going to change anything, but this is a place for you to change those things if you are transferring away from one site to another, from one server to another server, for example. Advanced options. Uh, you usually never need to work on this one also. So pretty much I did not change anything here you don't need to click run update so as that processes I'm seeing here on my instructions okay name was there click through the default settings to resurrect the site after it succeeds click on each of the four tasks listed when you complete all four tasks your site is resurrected and ready to use so did everyone get to this Step three, very important final steps. All right, so we've got review the install report. There are no deploy errors, update errors, or warnings. Great. Did anyone get any errors or warnings at this point? Okay, good. It has happened to me when I work on clients' sites that sometimes a warning appears, sometimes an error, and that's honestly a technical thing to figure out what the problem is. You would have to read the report and the report is not really set up like a very user-friendly document. This is the report. It might seem like a lot of gibberish. So if you get any warnings usually you'll be okay to proceed. You'll still have to test your site and maybe discover some problems but warnings still let you use the site. Errors however make your site come to a grinding halt and you might not be ha you might not have a usable site if you have any errors well you need to click on this log on the top right and maybe read this thing and maybe somewhere here you can figure out something went wrong and try to fix it but it is technical so let's say we had no problems on number one now let's go to number two save permalinks so go ahead and click save permalinks That opens up a new tab. We've got the original duplicator tab and a new login tab. We're going to log in. If you're brand new, here's what we've been using as our login information, which, are, which of course, again, are terrible. But when we're in a real-world environment, we will use better results. Our username has been admin, and our password has been password, with a capital P. Where did you get that? 
Can't see. Mm, no, you didn't need to go in there. I was just showing there as an example if you had problems. So you can close this down. Yeah. So I can't show it to you here, but the password is password with a capital P. Click login. You can do so, but it'll only remember you for the rest of the day until you go home. Click login. That's up to you. It's useful to leave it on remember me so you don't have to keep logging in. However, I'm always having arguments with the other people in my company, don't do remember me. Because when you go to any other computer, suddenly, because you never had to remember it, you don't know how to log in. So if you're on your own computer, it doesn't matter. But us, my company, that we work with different computers in different places, it doesn't matter that you click remember me on your own computer. You're on my computer. So you need to remember your password. So it's up to you to decide. What we're doing on this screen is simply Resaving our permalink structure, resaving re our addresses so that we have nice, pretty addresses that actually have readable words like options and admin instead of numbers. This is what we're setting here because the default in WordPress is to save every address as a number, a number from your database, which is not good for search engine optimization. The search engines don't like your website named with numbers like that. Any other of these options works great, but I usually recommend post name. That's what is currently selected. If it's not selected, click on post name. Even if it already is selected, just then click on save changes. So save your changes. Was it on post name because you saved it? Yes, exactly. Last month we, we had set it to post name and it remembered it, so it's still on post name. But a default WordPress installation will most likely be set to default, which is the worst, the worst option. So I'm going to save changes. At the top, uh, we have the duplicator tab and this permalinks tab. Go ahead and close the permalinks tab. We're done with this. We're done setting permalinks back on duplicator. So step one, step two, step three would, in, would require for us to browse to every section of our site, click every link, follow every procedure of our site. We don't have time to do that full kind of test. I'm going to assume that yes, my site works. If this were your own site, I would zoom by this like I'm about to. If this were your own site, I would take a moment to click the test and follow it along. But I'm not going to do it. So let's assume that we did number three. Number four, security cleanup. We need to delete these old installation files so that we don't accidentally revert our site back to the starting point. Because conceivably, it's very improbable, but not impossible, that let's say you're working on your site for a whole month, two months, and somehow you launch this installer again, and it takes you back to what you did two months ago. Highly improbable, because you, you, you would have to be totally asleep and click a bunch of things to proceed, right? But not impossible. So number four, let's delete those old files just in case. But don't worry, I've got a copy of the whole site on my flash drive. I'm not deleting the original files and I'll be totally lost. I've got a copy of them. I'm just deleting them from the server that I where I don't need them anymore. So click number four. Click OK. Uh, so here we've got Um, reserved duplicator files have been detected in the root. Please delete these. Okay, great. So let's delete reserved files. In the older versions of this plugin, maybe like one or two versions ago, it used to do it. It used to do this as soon as you clicked security cleanup, it would do it. 
Now there's an extra step. I don't quite like this, but we have to live with it. Now it doesn't do it until you click again one more time, delete them. It used to simply do it, but now you have to confirm. Delete them. And also I see that things are also a little different in that it deleted the these files, there goes the installer file, etc. But it says, it is recommended to remove your zip file from the root of your WordPress. And you will need to use manually. That's weird. In the older versions, it would clean it all out quickly and the zip file. So I'm going to need to update my instructions again. It didn't delete, it didn't delete the zip file. So let's, uh, let's do this now. Um, Minimize your window and let's go back to the folder. Go back to your C drive where you had your WordPress folder. Remember your your WordPress folder is in computer. Under local C, but then WAMP and then www and then WordPress. So I've got the 2015 Well inside of that folder then whatever yours is called. Okay. So inside of the WordPress folder what it's telling us is we deleted everything except for the zip file. This is this is everything that the site was. I don't know why the author of the plugin decided to do this. This has no use without the installer file, which was deleted. Right here it says we deleted the installer file. So why did they delete the installer but not the zip file? That's odd. One or two versions ago it, it, it would. So I'm going to complain to the author and maybe something will happen. Archive is not exactly explanatory. Yes, it's not. It's telling you this is your archive, but it's not quite explaining it. So the point is, we need to delete the zip file. It has no use, and it's going to get in our way when we try to create another archive at the end of the day. Do you remember that at the end of the day last week? So we might as well delete it now. I'll put it in my instructions. I'll give you a version 3, I guess, to remind us to do this, because now we have this remnant, like an appendix. That's uh, the order we just moved, right? The real class? Well, one? yeah, but it's incomplete. The one we moved at the beginning of the class also had the installer.php file. This has no installer, so there's no way to use this. We're not going to unzip it. The installer is supposed to unzip it, so it's totally useless. So just go ahead and delete this. So you don't do versions on here? We do, but we do it by way of having different folders. We have the 0, 9, 20, Eight folder. That's one version of the archive. Today we're going to make another archive and it'll have the version of 10.05. Okay. okay, so that was... we deleted the archive. We can go back to the web browser. So we've cleaned everything up. We've got a site fully functional, probably, because I've managed to log in at, at least. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. We had the duplicator tab and this tools tab. We're, we're done with the duplicator tab, actually. We're done with this duplicator tab. We did all the steps one, two, three, four. Uh, so we can just close the duplicator tab and stay in this tools tab. We've got a resurrected site. Going back to my instructions, we've done everything within resurrect your site. I'm going to add the extra step nine, I guess, about deleting that zip file. The last thing that we'll do is this rewrite module, then we'll take a break. This is what I mentioned before about our permalinks. When we were over on the permalink screen, we had said, we had said, let's use pretty addresses. Let's use the post name, real words. In order for that to work, though, we need to activate this option in WAMP server. 
this is not on by default, and we will have to turn it on every time we come back to this room. But I've got it listed right here. So we're going to click on the ramp server icon. That's that little green W in the corner. Let's click the little green W. And then it says click Apache and service. Oh, yeah, that's a little mistake, isn't it? No, it's not under service. It's under Apache module. Sorry about that. That needs to be updated. WAMP server, Apache, and then Apache modules. It's right next to services. But it's Apache modules, and then we're going to scroll down to find rewrite. It's alphabetical, so all the way down to the R's. Rewrite module. Is that what we did last time, Victor? Yeah, and like I said, we'll need to do it every time because the computers forget right. when we restart them. Rewrite module. Mm -hmm. So notice it's not on by default. I don't know if this is a bug or for whatever reason, but WAMP server does not have this active, and this is a very common module. All of these modules are just extra features of a, of a web server. For some reason, WAMP server doesn't have rewrite module on. The reason we activate this is so that our, all of our links work properly. Instead of it saying localhost slash 125, it'll say localhost about us. So turn on rewrite module. You'll see the green, green W go through a few different colors, but eventually it should go back to green. Just so wait a moment. I have a question with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, how do we know that it's, it's already being checked? Because when we go back again, it, it, it doesn't have a check mark on, you know? Something's going on. It should have the check mark on. Yeah, my question is I'm going to go back to it, and I'm going to check it. It should have it on. If it doesn't, you'll have to turn it on again, but I'm going to go back to check it. It is, it should be on. You might have accidentally clicked request module, the one above it, or the one below it. Okay, so once again, if it doesn't have it, then we'll turn it on one more time. Uh, it should do it. Uh, I don't know, sometimes these computers are a little weird, even though they're all exactly the same. If it doesn't do it, the break's coming up very soon, so I'll, I'll check. I got an error message. Yeah. The break's coming up very soon, so I'll help you. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> okay, so then what happens is the little W goes from red to orange to green, mine's back to normal. Obviously, like I said, I, do it, I make it seem so easy up here. That's why you've also got to try it on your own home computers. I didn't, and it worked, but sometimes you you just have to restart the service, not stop it, just restart. Yeah. So if it didn't work for you, we're going to come to the break very soon. But uh, if it worked for you, then I got the green W back. My check mark is marked. And to confirm that it worked, all that I'll do is I'll go back up to Victor's bakery and click visit site and if I click on any one of these links on the left they should work if you rewrite module this is also one of the ways you can you can see that it doesn't work if you click on any of your links on the left side and it says you know not found that means your rewrite module isn't working so mine is working So when we upload the inversions to the GoDaddy work uh, mm -hmm. this is what we're going to be doing as well? Pretty much, yes. Slightly different because you're going to be uploading these to a real server using, uh, using FTP or using cPanel. You know, you're going to upload the, the, that installer file and the zip file. You're going to upload them to the server. Here, we just dragged it from one folder to another. But in a real environment, you're going to upload it from your computer to the server, and then still follow the same steps. So you, you don't use a WAMP anymore when you do that? No. The WAMP is only for your local 
virtual server on your computer. All right, so uh, let's take a break. If it didn't quite work for you, call me over. It's 2 o'clock. Um, we'll be back at 2.10, and then we'll proceed.